peace and blessings, family. Always. Okay, much love to the Most High Creator and the King of Victory. St. Matthew chapter 7, verse 1. Judge not that ye be not judged. Second verse. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye shall meet, it shall be measured to you again. The Father do not want us to be casting stones at each other, whether it be the woman or the man. Like it states in Romans chapter 3, 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of the Almighty Father, who they call God. Yes, we all are sinners, whether the male or the female. We all have committed some kind of crime against the Almighty Father Creator. Like it says in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 7, to remember the days of old in ancient times. Consider the years of many generations of the past generations before our generation going all the way back to the ancient biblical generations. Ask thy father and he will show thee thy elders, which they used to do, and they will tell thee of the crimes and the wicked sins that our ancestors committed against the father. Just like it states in the book of Jeremiah chapter 325, which states this, we lie down in our shame. The way we mistreat each other is a shame. The way brothers and sisters is mistreating each other on Facebook is part of that shame. The way we disrespect and dishonor each other. We are still lying down in our shame of iniquity. This is evil. And our confusion covers us. And this is nothing but a ball of confusion. This is nothing but a ball of confusion. When the man is fighting against the woman and the woman is fighting against the man, when the man is calling the woman a stink, B-I-T-C-H, and the woman is calling the man such and such, Jeremiah chapter 325, for we have sinned against the Almighty Father. Yes, we have. The man and the woman. We all have done wickedness against the true authority of our existence, the Almighty Father who they call God in this world. So who's in a position to point the finger at who? You have done wickedness. I have done wickedness in the past. We all have done wickedness. And our ancient ancestors have done wickedness, which is the reason why we're suffering here today. So who's in a position to point the finger at who? And what you brothers and sisters is doing on Facebook, okay, that are casting each other down, that are condemning each other, Okay, that's using all kind of wrong judgment against each other for us who this pertaineth to. This is straight up evil. This is straight up wicked. And it's a waste of time. And it is not the Father's will, but rather the will of Satan. Jeremiah chapter 3, 25. This is the reason why. For we, you and me, we have sinned against the Almighty Father, all of us. We and our fathers, our ancient ancestors, from our youth, even until this day, and have not obeyed the voice of the Almighty Father. Because the Most High has given us grace to love each other. The Most High don't want us to be casting each other down. So all that negativity, okay, that brothers and sisters are promoting on YouTube is straight up Satan. And Facebook as well is straight up satanic to the bone marrow. So the Most High has given us grace here. And the Most High has given us forgiveness. And the Most High has given us this forgiveness and grace to repent and change our ways, okay? And to learn to respect each other and to learn to deal with each other with dignity and honor and not to be casting those stones at one another because we all have committed crimes, okay? Whether 20 years ago, whether 30 years ago. And let us take a real good look and what is going on in this earth. Look what's going on in Russia. Look what's going on in Korea. Look what's going on in Syria. You see, look what's going on in Egypt. Look at the anarchy, the chaos, and the impoverishment. When are we gonna get it? The Almighty Father is not down with this type of wickedness, okay? Like the wickedness, the sickness that you see some individual doing on Facebook using Facebook to attack each other and to disrespect each other. That's the spirit of Satan. Instead of using these different tools, while they still are active, to do positive things, to become friends, to become brothers, to become sisters, to prepare, to
to prepare for the marriage of salvation of Matthew the 25th chapter. And the Most High is not pleased with our attitude. Titus the third chapter in the second verse. He told us to speak evil of no man. So why are we speaking evil against each other? And to be no brawler. So why are some of you Israelites brawling and fighting against each other when the Most High told us not to do these things? But rather, be gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For the Most High said, more greater you are, more humble you are. Those are the high levels of understanding which the Most High loves and respects. These are the keys of life. The keys of life starts with the spirit of humility and humbleness and brotherly love and sisterly love. The third verse, in case we forgot, the Most High want to remind us, for us that are high-minded, that think we're better than another brother or sister that's caught up in darkness, which the Most High is going to pull some of them out of darkness and bring them into the light, male and female. And we can't forget about the children. Titus, the third chapter and the third verse. Stay still for those that think they're more holy than the other brother or sister that's maybe caught up, okay, in their darkness, which the Most High is going to pull a lot of them out of darkness and bring them, okay, into the light of his understanding and resurrect them. Because a lot of them is written in the book of life. They just have not reached that appointed time when the Most High would begin to transform their mind from that wickedness. Titus, the third chapter and the third verse. The Almighty Father wants to remind us, for us that's high-minded and think we're better than each other in case we forget in Titus the third chapter in the third verse for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish I remember when I was a fool okay I remember when I was a fool living in darkness before the Most High brought me into the light disobedient I remember when I was disobedient yes disobedient okay to righteousness yeah remember when we used to smoke those blunts and drink those 40 ounces some of us used to, okay, smoke angel dust, and some of us used to lie, steal, cheat, commit adultery, fornicate, and some of us even got blood on our hands. So we're not in the position to cast stones at people because we all have messed up with the Father. And the Most High is calling us back into the image to take on humility, but not to be a fool, you see? And the Most High wants us to be friends and brothers and sisters again and not to disrespect each other and not to provoke each other male and female or rather provoke the almighty father creator who they call god which many of us are doing okay by disrespecting one another with the most high is against that type of behavior and attitude it's the same old historical garbage over and over again and you got men and women okay deceiving okay the adolescents to look up to them and to bow down to them and to worship them. When the Almighty Father told us in the book of St. John chapter 3, 14, that we're supposed to be looking up to the King of Victory and taking heed to his counsel of instructions, how we're supposed to operate and function and how we're supposed to deal with each other, men and women, in a spirit of honor, dignity, and respect. And we're going to get right into this. And this is why the King of Kings told us not to be using no premature judgment. Because in many cases, we look at a situation from a very shallow surface level. But when you go back into the history, when it was 13, 14, 15, you're going to see some real evil that caused them to turn out the way they are here today. So this is a touchy situation here. And it's not just the sisters, it's the young soldiers too. Some of them were sodomized when they was a child against their will. Some of them were victimized. A lot of us was brought up inside these homicide, genocide family structures, which ain't no happy land operation. That's why the King of Kings stated this in the book of St. John, the ninth chapter, in the 56th verse. For the King of Kings, the son of man, is not come to destroy men's life, but to save them. Save who? The sinners those that was victimized, those that were sodomized against their will in their early childhood ages, the young sisters that was raped when they was 13 and 14 and molested and abused and spiritually scarred. These are the brothers and sisters 
who the Almighty Father is sending the Captain of Salvation to come back to deliver from these situations and circumstances and to reestablish them back in the image of royalty, dignity, integrity. Revelation 21 and 4. For the Most High shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Revelation chapter 7, 16. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, for this is the Father's will, okay, that he will grant to the downtrodden, for those that have been used and abused, for those who have been spiritually scarred against their will, the Father will not forsake them. That's why the King of Kings was always hanging out with the publicans and the sinners. Yes, the people that was looked upon as peasants and trash. Those are the people that the Almighty Father is coming back to get. Yes, indeed. Let's let our sister, okay, Danielle Williams, okay, tell her situation. I started to hate men at this time because every time I was hurt, it came from a man. Danielle Williams believed she had good reason to hate men. It began when a daycare provider's son repeatedly molested her starting at eight years old. This is the reason why, okay, the Almighty Father stated in the book of 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter and the fifth verse, therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come. You see? Because a lot of our judgment is wrong. And in many cases, we look at situations on a very surface level. We don't deal with the whole historical context of the matter. Like Romans, the 14th chapter in the fourth verse states, Who are thou that judges another man's servant? Just like the man is supposed to be a servant of the Most High, women are also supposed to be the servant of the Most High. Who are thou that judges another man's servant? That's the question that the Father is asking us here today. Who are we to judge the Most High's Servant, pertaining to a situation and circumstance like this, where you have our sister Danielle Williams, who was molested when she was eight years old. Let us continue. Danielle Williams believed she had good reason to hate men. It began when a daycare provider's son repeatedly molested her starting at eight years old. He instilled that fear. If you tell, this is what's going to happen to you. And he would hit me. He was physically abused me. I was scared of him. And then I was like, well, if I tell, maybe I'll get in trouble. So I didn't say anything. So do you have it? From the voice of our sister, Danielle Williams. And her case is quite common with many other people. And the situation of her case is found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 1. Verse 4, pertaining to how she was molested while attending a daycare center by somebody's son. So she was spiritually scarred and spiritually bruised way before she even became a woman. As Isaiah chapter 1 verse 4 states, all sinful nation. And this sin starts way before, in some cases, we even become a adult. Was Wisdom of Solomon Chapter 3, verse 19 states, For horrible is the end of the unrighteous generation. And this is the act of the unrighteous generation. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 4, All sinful nation of child molestation, a people laden, which means heavy, with iniquity, which represents wickedness, a seed of evil doers. A seed of evil doers. So it's not always the woman all the time. Okay? In some cases, it's the wicked men. Also, it's wicked little boys, too. Because when a woman gets pregnant, okay, through the act of fornication or adultery, in many cases, she will bring forth a cursed seed because that's an unrighteous way, okay, for a woman to get pregnant. Because really, okay, we all really supposed to be married, okay, and we all supposed to teach our kids, okay, from the time they can begin to understand and comprehend the rules and regulations of the Almighty Father. Okay, all this sleeping around, these are the consequences. So, Daniel Williams, 
She was a victim of these circumstances that Wisdom of Solomon, the third chapter, okay, speaks about in the 12th verse, which states, for their wives are foolish, and it takes two to tangle, and their children wicked. Why is the children wicked? Because the way the children was conceived was an unrighteous way. Fornication babies bring forth evil demonic babies. Adultery babies bring forth demonic satanic demon babies. Okay, and they bring forth situations and circumstances like this. As Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3 verse 16 proclaims, as for the children of adulteress. Adulteress represents a woman that is married and she goes out and gets pregnant from another man. They shall not come to their perfection because the Most High don't honor that type of unrighteous pregnancy. And the seed of unrighteous beds, which represents getting pregnant, through the act of fornication, which is dealing with sleeping around with many different men or many different women and getting pregnant in that type of way, or rather the seed of unrighteous bed represents getting pregnant through committing adultery when the woman is married, which both parties are guilty, which affects the pregnancy of the fetus, okay, because you're dealing with negative energy, because there's a science to pregnancy. And it's called marriage. The true definition of marriage. The true codes of marriage is really every man on this earth is supposed to take a virgin. And they're supposed to stay together until death do them part. Because when you start to sleep around with this guy and that guy and this woman and that woman. And you get pregnant. Okay. In the midst of that type of activity, it affects okay, the fetus. It affects the seed. It affects the child. Now, the Most High can forgive because he says all sins can be forgiven except blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Of course, with the agreement with us and the Almighty Father of us repenting and changing our ways and stop living that type of life, which is an evil life. That's why you got so many problems, okay, in the world here today, because we got the wrong concept pertaining to how to operate. And how to function, okay, in the proper role of a woman and the proper role of a man. Let us continue. I started to hate men at this time because every time I was hurt, it came from a man. And this is the reason why some women, okay, have developed this hatred, okay, against, okay, men. Because of these experiences. Like it says in Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. In the 8th verse, there's a time to love and a time to hate, which is a natural emotion that the Almighty Father Creator have encoded, okay, inside our makeup when the Most High created us. But in many other cases, you have women that just hate men for no apparent reason because they're just straight up evil and straight up wicked. Yes, wicked all the way down to the bone marrow, underneath the flesh, just like you got wicked evil men as well. Okay, all the way down to the bone marrow, underneath the flesh. First Ezra chapter 4, verse 37 speaks about them. Wine is wicked, the king is wicked, women are wicked. You see, but well, that's not the case pertaining to Danielle Williams. Her case is not based upon wickedness. So let us continue. She lived with her father after her parents divorced, and she watched him routinely beat every girlfriend he had. He eventually turned that rage onto Danielle, adding him to the list of men she hated. He picked me up by my throat, he lifted me up, and he threw me down to the floor. He beat me so much that I passed out. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 5, 26. For among my people are found wicked men. Daniel Williams, her father was a wicked, satanic man. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So we can no longer define things accordingly to that old black and white nonsense, because you got a lot of people that look like us, that are Satan on the inside, but they brown skin on the outside, which don't mean nothing. He picked me up by my throat, he lifted me up, and he threw me down to the floor. He beat me so much that I passed out. 
Now, let's get some clarity on this, okay? This is not the image of every man because the elect of the men, okay? Malcolm X, he wasn't no woman beater, okay? They're not going to conduct themselves in such fashion or, or rather the woman that's chosen elect of the Almighty Father. Their attributes will be in harmony with Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. It speaks about mercy, kindness, and humbleness. This is the way the elect men and woman is going to fight to conduct themselves. As Colossians chapter 3, okay, verse 12 describes. Danielle's father went to jail for child abuse and she went to live with her mother in Los Angeles. There, a man in the neighborhood began to invite young Danielle over to his house. She loved the attention from him until the day he raped her. I knew that I hated men even more, even more. Because now I'm 12 years old and I had already been molested at eight. My dad tried to kill me when I was 10. And now this man who I trusted just raped me. I hated, I hated men. Let's read Matthew's the seventh chapter in the first verse once again. Judge not that ye be not judged, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. That's why we can't be using all this judgment and anger and hostility against each other. Because a lot of us has been through some real serious, serious things. So here you have our sister Danielle Williams. Okay, first of all, she was molested when she was eight years old. It went from molestation to her father abusing her, who eventually he got locked up in the cage where he belong eventually she moves away to Los Angeles to live with her mother and what happens she runs into another demon because that's what he is he's a demon and he rapes this 12 year old sister this is straight up wickedness no wonder so many of our minds are messed up psychologically and the consequence of rape is really that man's supposed to be put to death his head's supposed to be put to bed his head supposed to be put to the slaughter. As Deuteronomy chapter 22, 25 explains, which states this, but if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field and the man force her, like Daniel Williams was forced, okay? Rape was forced on her, which is a savage way of dealing with a woman, which is very uncivilized. That's wicked to the bone marrow. And the man forced her and lie with her. Then the man only that lay with her shall die. That man is supposed to be put to death. No wonder so many of us are psychologically twisted. And the Israelite man that's running around talking about it's okay, okay, to rape a woman, that's wicked. That's the spirit of Satan. You're not supposed to rape no woman. That's evil. The Most High said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Raping a woman is not a holy act. That's an evil, satanic, demonic act. And the Most High is not going to have that in his world. Ain't going to be no filthy wickedness like that in his world. From the male or the female. So brothers better snap out of that foolishness. And stop twisting scriptures around to make them say something that they're not. So in the Most High's kingdom, ain't going to be no raping no woman. Ain't no man going to be running around raping no woman, okay, from no other different nation. That's foolishness. The Most High is dealing with purity and holiness. Raping a woman is not a holy act. Like it says in the book of Leviticus chapter 11 verse 44, the father said, be ye holy for I am holy. Raping a woman is not a holy act. Fornication is not holiness. Adultery is not holiness. Chichi man is not holiness. Murder is not holiness. Hating your brothers and your sisters is not holiness. But years later, Danielle's attitude towards men softened. When she was a teenager, she fell in love for the first time and thought he was in love too. So this older man is telling me everything that I wanted to hear and more. I just wanted to just be his. After the first time she slept with him, the man told her he was a pimp and wanted her to be his prostitute. Danielle was devastated and refused. Then she discovered she was pregnant with his child. Every time I get with a guy, something bad is happening. I, I'm done. Then you tell me I'm pregnant. I'm 13. I'm in the eighth grade. What am I going to do with a baby? And the baby's father is a 27-year-old pimp. That's why for us that are running this marathon race to disrespect each other, to disrespect the woman of our nations, 
That's not to say we don't understand that there's wicked women. Just like there's wicked men, we understand that. For us that's promoting this wickedness, okay, of stereotyping, okay, the woman of our race and attacking them with no understanding because of our bad experiences, because we've chose not to obey the instructions of the Father, or some of us just don't understand, which we're not supposed to be choosing no evil woman. First and foremost, the man has to get his mind right with the Creator. That's where man problem is coming from. He has to seek the instructions of the Almighty Father. Like the scripture says, Isaiah 34 verse 16, but we don't want to hear that. When it states, seek ye out of the book of the Almighty Father and read it. And you'll find the correct instructions how to operate, how to conduct yourself, okay, as a man. You'll find wise counsel. You'll find wisdom in the Proverbs, which teaches you how to avoid getting caught up with these evil women, as well as the woman getting caught up with these wicked men. And it's all evil. It's all wicked. It's all stupidity. And the Most High is going to charge us one day for all the disrespectful evil things that we are doing against each other. Whether we're doing it on Facebook or inside our immediate house, whether we're doing it on YouTube, whether we're doing it on the telephone verbally. Like it says in Jeremiah chapter 422, for my people is foolish, and this is very foolish, it's very ignorant, to be investing our life into this longevity of disrespecting and assassinating each other character. When we as a race, a nation of people, have already been beat down, tore down, ripped down. Jeremiah 4, 22, for my people is foolish, and we are foolish for us that are doing these things against each other. They have not known me, and we do not know the counsel of the Father. They are sottish children. The word sottish means stupefied. And we are stupefied when we do these things against each other. And they have none understanding. And we that do these things, we don't have understanding concerning, okay, the situation and circumstances pertaining to what certain brothers and sisters have been through. A lot of them been through some serious hell. And here we come, the evil, wicked one, whether it be the man or the woman, adding more hell on top of the hell until there can be no more hell. They're wise to do evil. Yes, yeah, some of us are wise to curse each other out, to disrespect each other, to put up some negative satanic posts on Facebook, okay? We're wise to disrespect the sisters of our nation and vice versa. The women are wise to disrespect the brothers that are trying to do what's right. We're not talking about the evil men and women of our nation. We're talking about the brothers and sisters that's trying, or maybe they're caught up, okay? Or maybe they still suffering from such trauma because of situations like this. And this is not the way we supposed to deal with a brother or sister that have experienced this type of hell. We supposed to deal with each other with understanding. This sister has been wounded. And just like Colossians chapter 3, 25, okay, states, which is a historical statement that has affected Every ancient empire that ever rose and fell. It states, he that doeth wrong, the wrong he shall receive. So the Most High going to charge us, okay, for this despicable way that we are dealing with one another. The big fat payback is coming, okay, towards our way one day. We have to repent of these evils. Like it says in Jeremiah chapter 4, 22, they're wise to do evil. We're so wise to mistreat each other. We're very wise to disrespect one another. We are wise to hate each other, whether it be the man or the woman, but to do good, to love each other, to care about each other, to respect each other, to consider each other, but to do good. They have no knowledge, which that knowledge is found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 26, which gives us the right, correct way we supposed to be thinking, okay, inside the skull, inside the mental, male and female, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 26, and whether one member suffer, all members suffer with it. This is the way a real true sister and a real true brother is supposed to be thinking. Whether I suffer or you suffer, okay, we all supposed to feel the pain. You see, the elephants, they have that understanding, okay, they're very affectionate. 
towards their kind. But reflecting back, okay, on this case with our sister Danielle Williams, okay, how the sister, she just explained how she moved on and she met this guy. She was 13 years of age. She was in the eighth grade. And he lied and deceived her and manipulated her mind. And this sister has already been shattered. He had sex with her and then turned around and told the sister, okay, that he want her to be a prostitute to make money for him. So the woman, she had her fault, but dealing with this case, this is not her fault. Okay? You see? It's some of these wicked men that's among us that look like us too as well. It's not just a woman. You have wicked women, but you have wicked men among our nation that have contributed to the destruction of the young sisters. That's why some of these sisters is bugged out in some cases. In other cases, some of them are just rebellious and evil. Because when you look at their upbringing, they had a good upbringing. But this does not pertain to our sister Daniel Williams. In the situation of this matter, pertaining to this evil individual that wanted to use her, okay, as a prostitute to make money, okay, off of her, sleeping with a whole bunch of men, is described in the book of Second Ezra, the fourth chapter, in the thirty-first verse. It says, "Ponder now; let us meditate on these things by thyself. How great fruit of wickedness the grain of evil seed. That's what we're dealing with. The grain of evil seed. There's many evil seeds among us that look like us, but they are not us. And these grain of evil seeds, okay, they are here to destroy and to abuse. Okay." They don't mean us no good. And if we have favor with some of these brothers or sisters, some of us need to talk to them. Hopefully they'll listen and to warn them of the danger because the young brothers and sisters, okay, of our nation, they are under a serious extreme attack to destroy them. To destroy them. And there's a lot of people that look like you and me that's down with the program of destroying them. It was over. As far as me caring about life, me caring about myself, me caring about men, oh, men was out the question. I, I was done. I hate, oh, my rage. It, it was a rage that I had for men. The, the sight of, of men made me sick. A friend convinced her she could manipulate and control men by stripping. She started dancing in nightclubs, and prostitution quickly followed. She pushed away any thought that what she was doing was wrong. Even though she had been raised in a church, she had no moral convictions. I didn't care. I knew who God was. I knew that what I was doing was wrong, but I didn't care. I hated men, and I thought this was a way to repay them. That's how I looked at it. I'm getting them back for them hurting me. And I felt like I had the upper hand now because before you guys had the upper hand and you were hurting me. Now the roles have switched and that's how I looked at it. One day, Danielle was invited oh. onto the set of a porn film in Hollywood. And I saw the check that was written out to one of the girls there. And I said, that's what you got for doing that? Where do I sign up? Because I was making a lot of money as a dancer and as an escort already, you know. But with the porn, I looked at it, that would be an even better way for me to make even more money. And I said, okay, let's go for it. After so long, it became normal. It became cool that I was a porn star. Danielle continued as a call girl as well. And one night she accepted a client who turned out to be a psychopath who wanted to kill her. And for three weeks, that man came in there and he raped me and he beat me and he told me over and over again, I'm gonna keep you. You're not leaving here. And I believed it. I knew that I was supposed to die. Now let's look at these severe repercussions which all started from Sister Danielle Williams, okay, being violated, okay, being molested when she was three years old, which led to 
child abuse, and then she moved to Los Angeles, and she met, okay, this grown man, 20-something years of age, and he raped her, okay, and it went from one level to another level to another level of more torment against her soul, which led her into prostitution and being a call girl, which her situation is described in Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 12. How she would open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when he had found a fountain and drink of every water near her by every hedge. Will she sit down and open her quiver against every arrow? It's not talking about a regular arrow that you put inside a quiver and shoot with a crossbow. This is a, a metaphor. It's talking about a woman sleeping with many different men where she became a victim of such circumstances. And then she was a call girl. And she picked up this lunatic, this maniac. That's why you sisters that's on Craigslist selling your flesh, you don't know the danger that you're putting yourself into because you might run into this same case where you run into some megalomaniac, some savage dog demon. Just like our sister Daniel Williams. Okay, she ran into this satanic demon who was beating her and raping her for about three weeks. And he said he was going to kill her, you see, until she dropped down on her knees. And she began to talk to the Almighty Father and thank the Most High Power that he delivered her. The Most High put the spirit in somebody's mind, another man, to deliver Sister Danielle Williams from this horrific, okay, manner. Let's let her tell the situation. I knew that I was supposed to die. And every day... I got weaker and weaker and weaker to the point where I just gave up. I collapsed to the floor and I wept and I wept and I wept. But I laid there and I cried so much that I, I couldn't speak. And I got my words together and I said, Lord, if you get me out of this, I'll change my life for you. Don't let me die like this. Not like this. 19 years old. He had to get me to that point to show me that I'm God. I'm still God. It's me and you. And at that very moment, I got my salvation. So just like it states in the book of Psalms, chapter 18, verse 48. He, the Almighty Father, Creator, He delivereth me from my enemies. Just like it states in the book of Daniel, chapter 6, verse 27. He delivereth, and he rescue, and he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth, who have delivered Daniels from the power of the lions. And that's exactly what happened to our sister Danielle Williams, who turned away from darkness, and she turned back to the righteous way, the way we all supposed to live life. And of course, as it states in Hosea 5.15, in the day of their affliction, that's when they shall seek my face early. You see, a lot of us got to be afflicted, okay, before we make a U-turn. And there's a lot of other brothers and sisters that's going to turn around, that's chosen and selected and elected, okay, by the Almighty Father. They just haven't come to that closure yet. So the Most High told us to judge not, least we be judged. The Father says, judge nothing before it's time. The Father said in the book of Matthew, chapter 21, verse 31, which is one of my favorite verses. The King of Kings stated how the Harlots, a Harlot is a prostitute. Daniel Williams was a victim of prostitution. So the King of Kings stated over 2,000 years ago that the Harlots, the prostitutes, shall go into the kingdom before a lot of us. You see? That come to repentance and change their lifestyle from that evil lifestyle and return back to the one that's responsible for bringing us into existence. That's why you can't be hard on people. That's why you can't be damning people. That's why we can't be judging people, using all kind of premature judgment. Because you never know what the Most High have prepared for the man or woman that's caught up in sin, like we used to be caught up in sin, and darkness, and evilness. You see? The message that the Most High is telling all of us is to stop the evil Whatever wickedness that we're doing, okay, the most high message is for all of us to stop the prostitution, 
to the sisters that's on Craigslist that you can hear this message. It's not worth it. These things can cause you to lose your life if the Almighty Father's protection is not protecting us. There's a lot of maniacs out there. Just like Sister Daniel Williams, she ran into one, as she explained in this video, who wanted to kill her and who was beating the starch out of her and he was raping her. But the Most High had mercy on this sister, just like he had mercy on a lot of us, like myself as well. So it's about understanding. It's about wisdom, consideration, and being concerned. Okay. And it's not about fighting over the Most High's name. It's not about fighting over the law. These things are all vain. It's not about self-exaltation. It's not about pride. The men and women that are doing those things on Facebook, you are missing the mark. Okay. When the King of Kings and the 12 disciples, when they came into the villages, these are the people that they were dealing with. And they told the brothers and sisters about right and wrong. Also, they told the brothers and sisters about the consequences if we continue that journey of evil life. Like it says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 5, Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thy own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. Like some of that Israelite madness, not all Israelites that are using Facebook to fight against each other. That's the moat, okay, that the king of kings have told us to cast out of our eye. That's striving in conflict and hating each other, okay? Total vanity and insanity. That's trying to establish their image. That's deceiving men to look up to them. That's falsely claiming that they're some type of general. It's all a lie. This is not the program. This is where it's at. This is what the Most High is dealing with. And this is how the Most High wants us to deal with the situation of the matter. You see? So we're going to conclude, okay, on this note. Because a lot of us, including myself, a lot of us is going to bring damnation on our soul if we don't clean up our act before that man come back. Because he ain't going to be playing with nobody. He has left the instructions. And what is required of us to receive the Most High's mercy and salvation? Some of those instructions is in Matthew's, the fifth chapter. Bless are the peacemaker. You see? A lot of us are running a vain race for us that are arrogant and proud, that are most rebellious against taking correction when we are wrong. I stand for correction and reproof anytime. Because this is not about pride. This is about humility. The Most High love a contrite, humble spirit. The Most High hates a arrogant, high-minded, rebellious, big-headed spirit. Whether it be the woman or the man. That won't take no reproof or correction. Like it says in Luke chapter 6 verse 37. Judge not and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive and ye shall be forgiven. Because if we don't forgive, Father is not going to forgive us. So we're going to end on Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16, which states this. My sisters and my brothers, these six things do the most I hate. So we're going to speak about some of the things that the most I hate. Yes, seven are an abomination. And the seventh is an abomination unto him. 17 verse, a proud look. So the Most High hate a proud look. Even if you're looking proud inside your face, the Most High is telling us he even hate when we have a proud look on our face. Man and woman, a lying tongue. The Most High hate a big fat liar. And hands that shed innocent blood. The Most High hate those that shed innocent blood. The 18 verse. And heart that deviseth wicked imagination. So if we're imagining evil things against one another, the most I hate that too as well. And feet that be swift and run into mischief, any form of mischief, with the mouth or with the hands, okay, the most I said he hates mischief. He hates deception. He hates trickery. 19 verse, a false witness that speak lies, 
and he that soweth discord among brethren. So the Most High said he also hate those that speak big fat lies. The Most High also hate he that soweth discord, division, strife, and conflict, and teach other brothers to hate other brothers, and teach other brothers to hate sisters, and teach sisters to hate brothers, and vice versa. The Most High said he hate all these things. And the Father have sent many messages, okay, many times, to tell us this to our face if we don't make these proper adjustments before that man come back. Okay? And judge us all for what we have done. If we don't settle the score, if we don't make peace with our brothers and sisters, if we don't put aside our differences, if we don't stop hating each other, if we don't stop disrespecting each other, whether the woman or the man, or myself. This is what the Father have to say to us. Because history is just repeating itself. These are the same old mistakes, okay, of the past in ancient times that caused us to get cast down in this situation here today. So we all are guilty. We all are filthy. We all have sinned. We all have erred. We all have disrespected the Almighty Father. We all have done some form of wickedness in the past or the present. The Father's telling us we have to get this thing together before we receive his visitation in such fashion. Of Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter, okay, and the ninth and the tenth verse. Know therefore that the Almighty Father, thy God, he is the power, the faithful power, which keepeth covenant. In mercy with them that love him. For us to get the most high's mercy, we have to love him by being obedient. By respecting each other the way he told us to do so, which is a good thing. And keep his commandments to a thousand generations. And we're descendant of those thousand generations, the temperance. But for us that rebel and refuse to humble and do what's right in the eyes of the Father, the Father is telling us in Deuteronomy 7, chapter and the 10th verse before his time that he is coming back to repay them that hate him to their face to destroy them male or female he will not be slack to him that hateth him he will repay him to his face because the most high ancient of days of Daniel chapter 7 and 9 has a particular appointed date when he shall snap necks, break skulls, and burn down the wicked. As Isaiah chapter 66, verse 15 and 16 informs us about that matter. As the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 14 and 15 explains this situation of the matter as well. And it's not going to be worth it in the end after all is said and done consequences shall be dreadful and horrific so we got to fight to do what's right we must choose the good over the evil getting it on so what are we really talking about and what is the solution to these problems that has been going on for over 4,000 years of time of history yes my brothers there are some very evil, wicked, satanic women on this earth today who are deadly just like rattlesnake poison. Yes, my sisters, there are also some very evil, wicked, satanic men on this earth today who are also deadly just like rattlesnake poison. There is a very few of us, a very small remnant among the masses, very few are chosen. The king is wicked. Women are wicked. The children are wicked. Just like 2nd Ezra chapter 4, 37. But what is the solution for the remnant? Is the solution for the man and woman to continue to keep on fighting against each other just like a maniac dog with rabies that needs to be put out of his misery on Facebook? What is the solution? Ideas, sweet counsel, womanhood, manhood, brotherhood, dignity, honor, respect, principles, vampire, doctors, devils, intentions, Mrs. Witchcraft, Mr. Warlocky, 
but what is the solution? Do anybody have any answers out there in the midst of this dragon hood nightmare? It's not just about talking. The footsteps of death is walking on this earth here today. And somebody did not eat dinner for seven nights and I'm starving. But what is the solution? Another video, but I lost my job. Farrakhan is right about the farmland. Forget about the doctrine. But what is the solution? But what is the solution? Are we going to keep on fighting against each other until we all drop dead? Mr. and Mrs. Abomination. And ain't no generals on this earth today. Stop lying, talking about you are priests and that we are the only ones that have the truth. Because that is straight up witchcraft, straight out of the gates of hell.